road to Pyeongchang 2018 starts here in Lake Placid, New York, twice itself a Winter Olympic venue. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the season opener in the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. We're in the Adirondack National Park in the shadow of Mount Van Hovenberg as we get this Olympic season underway. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me is Lake Placid resident and bobsledder for life, John Morgan. John, this track is a tough one, even if you're an American. Well, the Americans haven't been on the track. It's been washed out most of the last month with the beautiful Indian summer we've had up here. But it's a challenge, as we all know, always is. But the thing is, it's more of a challenge because the curves have changed. The track got washed out Sunday night. They've rebuilt it. It's not the same track the athletes remember, and they haven't had many trips down it. Curve one, okay. Now we're in the cliffside section of the track. Curve two, a lot of mistakes here by, by the American team in the women's race coming out of curve three. It's just a changed track from what they're familiar with a couple weeks ago when they heard training. The Devil's Highway, 678. Wow. That's a challenge. A lot of transition changes there. Now there's Shady. Curve 10. Slingshot onto the bottom. Three-quarter combination. 11, 12. This is the sleds up near the roof. 13. Woo. We'll have some great pictures for you there. 14 out of Stan Benham's Bend into the chicane. The heart named after I love New York. And the heart section, curve 18, 19. We saw a claim one athlete in the first, in the second run of women's bobsled. Could be another one today. Uphill section going into the curve 20 in the finish. Look at the track record. Pierre Luters, 2003. Pierre Luters is back. He's coaching the Korean team. That is one of the longest standing start records in the business. 2003, finish record. Finish records are 14 years old. Pierre Luders, a multiple winner on this track. Last time he won here was back 2007, 2008. The winningest driver here, perhaps unsurprisingly, the late great Stephen Holcomb won last year with Sam McGuffey, the year before with Caldo, Carlo Valdez, won four in a row starting with the 2012 Worlds, three of which were with Stephen Langton, who is back in the US lineup. It's getting windy outside, John. Air temperatures dropped by two degrees, and it feels like a whole lot more. Track temperature will be staying around the minus two mark, but actually the afternoon is getting pretty cold. I'm glad everybody is well wrapped up, both in the warming up area here at the top of the hill and watching the racing. There is Rico Peter for Switzerland. Jesse Lumsden, Helen Upton, his partner, and daughter Flossie, I know, watching at home, Flossie's first ever bobsled race. And our race gets underway with Whitehall, New York resident, local bobsledder Cody Baskew for the USA. Britain's Brad Hall, Simone Batazzo of Italy are the first three out in a 27 deep field. Only the fast 20 go through into the second heat. That is a lot of sleds. You think there's something special coming up at the end of the year or? Well, the problem is there's a lot of sleds, but there's a lot of good sleds. I mean, yeah. There's a handful of athletes, or maybe eight, seven or eight athletes that could, five athletes that could win this race there's eight nine athletes that could win a medal in this race and this one right here is going to set the pace and nearly a third of our field will go home after the first heat the two-man bobsleigh world cup season gets underway in lake placid new york with local boy Car cody baskin and carlo valdez behind him in the first of our sleds one guy from the left coast the other one from the right coast carlos valdez ucla Track and field athlete, and you know, start 512. They did better than that in their U.S. trials here about three weeks ago. Cody just dominated the races, and you know, he's every year gets a little bit better. His nemesis then start. It's not a bad about his driving. He didn't have a very good season last year when he went to Europe. So it would have been a four man race, so I was predicting he was going to win. Well, uh, see what the track's got left. I mean, he's already been 140, 100 sleds down today. Between skeleton and what he's found. The last American that not called Stephen Holcomb to win on this track is here this weekend. He's not competing. John Napier has got a month off from college. He's working as a track worker. He won the two-man race back in 2009-10. Holcomb was in silver medal position, and they changed those positions around the next day. Holcomb went out and won the four-man basket. Uh, I beg your pardon, Napier took the silver. 
So Cody Baskew gets the race underway with a 55-88 run. That 54-81 track record. Yeah, well, it's been a warm-ish afternoon, and we're still in the middle of it. cold by the time the second heat starts in this competition. There's going to be one, one track that they're coming down now, and another track they're going to come down. Second run, I predict we're going to see some faster times in cold race. Yeah, especially at the end of the second heat, which will be getting on for two hours from now. Two and a half hours. Brad Hall of the USA with the Great giant uh, Great Britain, yes, with the giant Toby Alubi behind him. Brad Hall started the season last year full of hope and expectation. Gouged his hand on the underside of the boxlet cow, sliced through the tendons in the back of his hand, and spent the rest of the season recovering. He's got some stud behind him. Toby's about six foot six. He's got to get that uh, large frame into the sled in an aerodynamic profile. Keep your eyes, see if you can see him at all on these straight, straight on shots. 1,200 lead, that's awesome. Yep. Brad Hall, been quietly improving every time he comes to the track. Three too many races in the World Cup last year, the final one of which was in Pyeongchang. He made the cut there in 19th spot, but really was struggling for fitness all year long. Four hundreds of a second back on the local boy, Cody Baskey. This is a good run. Stays with 10, 15 hundreds here. That's a great run. They'll drop out to 25 or 30, but that's just experience coming down the track. It's a good run for him, no matter what, 30 hundreds? Yeah. That's a good run. A lot of hope in the British program, especially if this guy stays around the next four years. Yeah. This is a good athlete here in the front seat. That, that, that injury down. last year was so random, just on cut, gouged his hand on the underside of the cow, sliced through all the tendons, and that just set him, you know, right back on his backside for the whole year. You know, he's probably got what? I think it's his first time he's been here in this I track. I think it is his first race here. Yeah. Some leaves in the track, some fall leaves there. But look at the way the sled got lifted up. Yeah. You can see a lot of Toby back there, so I'm sure track the British coaches will look at that and look at that aerodynamic profile to improve. But he got 6'6", six, six, about 250 pounds. Yeah, there's a lot of him to fit in. Next up in what will, you've got to say, be undoubtedly his last season as a bobsled driver, Simone Batazzo of Italy, with Lorenzo Bilotti behind him. Look at that sled. Typical Italian style. They certainly get the style points for the clothing and the design. Yeah. Just gorgeous. Look at the helmets. Pirelli tires. Ferrari on the side of the sled. And one of the most, the most experienced senior pilot in the field. This will be his sixth, tenth, fourth Olympic Games. Hopefully, Simone stays healthy. He's had a lot of injuries, hamstrings and groins, back last few years that have really limited his consistency on the World Cup. Well, he won on this track in the two-man race in the 2010 season straight after the Games. Beat Alexander Zubkov and Karl Angerer into silver and bronze. Then he had Sergio Riva behind him. That was one of his last race wins. Got the experience to drive. His start time now is... 1200 behind, or you know, it's 1900. Oh, it was late there. It was like that. Across the line, 56 32, a tenth of a second down on Great Britain's Brad Hall. And again, as you said, he has plenty of experience, a former race winner on this track in two-man. So that's a good indication that Brad Hall put a good run together. Bronze medalist at the World Championships in San Moritz in 2007. So when we talk about the senior member of the field, mm -hmm. this is it right here. And you won't meet a nicer gentleman or a sports person yep. competing today. And this is where he was late. When you see the back ends up in the air like that, that's inches from being on your helmets exit going uphill you can't tell you how crucial that is you don't see it on television but that's a pretty steep uphill section there yeah you feel it when you're walking Ivo de Bruyne of the Netherlands his wife Christine competed for Canada in the women's race Broad van der Zijde returning to the Dutch team and with the hairdryer of Tom Delahunty, their coach yelling them off at the top always an incentive to go quick 5-2-0 Nice to see Brewer back with his home country. Evo, his wife, 
posted the sixth best finish of the race earlier today. Her best finish ever. Congratulations to Christine DeBruyne. Let's hope that uh, Evo can get a good time here. He's got to finish eight or better in any World Cup or top 12 World Cup points to qualify just for the Dutch Olympic standards. 17th in this race last year, and he'll need to be that quick this year in a field of 27 sleds. That is a really deep field. He's hanging in there. Could be a top three, maybe a top two. With good. Oh, he's late. Really late there. Well, he's got to hang it out there. He needs the speed from somewhere, and being conservative isn't going to do it in this field. That's okay. He knocks out Pratazzo. Tom likes that. A hundredth behind Brad Hall of Great Britain. And the Dutch national papers have a half-page advert they're, they're encouraging people to watch their team on TV this evening. It's called the Team Holland Casino. Yeah. That's who's advertising and promoting. Great job. Yeah. Vim Norman, you know, building some new sleds. We've seen some design yeah. of the new equipment coming out. It's, they tested it up in Birmingham. We'll probably see it in Winterberg. Watch these pictures. If you don't realize how close he was. To be nicking up that brand new helmet he's got on. He does. Yeah, he does. Got away with that. He won't be the last guy in two runners there. Got to be fast and loose. We've seen one Italian sled. Here is our second. This is Patrick Baumgartner, former brakeman. This is the young hope for the future with Mattia Variola behind him. 2012 Junior World Olympic champion? Yeah. A definite contender. Oh, the, the brakeman slip! Oh, oh, the brakeman only just hangs onto the sled, but of course, as he pulls himself oh, into line. So does that. We saw that happen with the Russian team. But look at the way he just steered her on that first curve, too. So this is going to be uh, really tough for him to finish in the top 20 coming down this track after that mistake. And I'm sure he's already feeling it. you got to put it out of your mind. You have to come down another 45 seconds here on this challenging track. Not right here. Yeah, Baumgartner may not have the speed at the top, but he needs to find it further down the track. This is going to be a tough field to make. 27 sleds, only the fast 20 go through. Start 5.30. Look at those lights. That's yeah. as good as we see. He ducked his head down in there. Looking for an extra couple hundred. Let's see if he gets through here. Yeah. And he's not shy on confidence, Patrick Baumgartner. Way off the pace. Though. Yeah. That, uh, Let's look at that replay. Well, that start was almost like they were jogging off because, you know, the brakeman, any power that he had going into the sled was lost and a whole lot more as he dragged it back into line. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He's lucky he made the sled. Yeah. We talked about Could this. be a rookie now. I, I don't recognize the brakeman. I think Matias has been in with Simone Batazzo yeah, yeah. over the last year or two, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it can happen to the most experienced brakeman. Let's take a look again at this start mishap. Okay, throw it out forward. Oh, they don't hit it together. They missed it. The driver hit it way after the brake, but did put off. What an athletic skill for him just to get into the sled. So they got to hit it cohesion. Bang, together. Again, it's the second step for the brakeman on the ice. His yeah. the, the spikes just didn't dig in and just Well, came. no, the, the driver didn't hit the push bar, pushed the sled out. So he was yeah. pushing a bag of potatoes, sack of potatoes, and yeah. that didn't work. <laughs> Cody Baskew, the race leader, 5 of 27 sleds down in the first heat. Yun Jung Won of Korea, he took his first World Cup medal on this track two years ago with bronze behind Stephen Holtman and Isho Valta. Yeah, they're going to 5-0-3. We could see sub five second start times here. Oh, that's late on two. Let's see if he gets out of three with a big hit. No, it's pretty good. Uh, Last now, coach, now coached by the Koreans, so they've had three different coaches in three years. Last year they started with the new Hyundai sled and their pace just kind of evaporated. They must get a handle on these sleds before the games. 1400s up now, so he's losing some of that early advantage. 18 to 14 speed isn't bad. He's been down to nine, so he's going to be close to it. A little quicker than Cody Baskin. He's got more speed on board, so he should hold it to the line if he gets the hard yeah, right. I, I don't think so. I think Baskin's got him on this right here. But should be right to the hunt. Either way. There's nine on his boy. This sled lost a lot of time in the bottom part of that track. 1800s before Shady. He lost 2700s to the bottom. Second place. And... Not a bad run, though. Yeah, they're 
track it out to some not a bad run. Not a bad run, but boy, they lost a lot of time on the bottom part of the track. Martin, hard to pick out. Not a gold medal winning run. So before Benham spin, you know, sometimes you can steer too much, which slows you down. You got to let the slide go. And look how high he is there at Benham spin, and then he dives out. This is the second part of the exit of Benham's bend down this straightaway into the chicane. Boy, you can see the brakeman shoulders and head back there. That's not good aerodynamic. Look, you can see the brakeman popping up. So aerodynamic profile. They lost a lot of time in the bottom yeah. part of the track. Well, there's one. Young Wo Xiao behind him, his brakeman. He's experienced enough not to be sticking his head up. So is Seaman Friedley, who's pushing with Rico Peter in the first of our two Swiss sleds. Rico won one of the races here in the class of last year. And also won the pre-Olympic test in four-man bobsledding last year. So the last race of the year in men's bob, he walked away with the gold medal. Sixth here last year in Lake Placid. Only medal in two-man last year came silver in Whistler, where we'll be in two weeks' time. Well, it's been a four-man season last year. These are good lines. He was deficit at the start. He's already in green numbers, so... Right there, only a little, little bang on the exit of Shady to see if it costs them. It's real close, the speed's excellent. Well, Rico seems to have this ability to keep the speed up despite hitting almost everything down the track. Crossover of 18-19, perfect, 900, he's accelerating away. Could be double digits lead here for Rico Bader. Ducks his head at the finish, yes! So there's a good run. Their speed at the bottom, 81.7 miles an hour, and that's what got him across the line. 16 hundredths of a second in front of Cody Baskin. That was a good run. It's, you know, start, they hit the 514 yeah. number. Dark visor on. High above the Lake Placid name, then he dives out here. Slingshot under the bottom, we like to say, but he's got a little bit of a tap. That's cost him a little bit. Probably not as much energy coming on the exit as he wanted, but he's the leader. Russia's Alexander Kazyanov and Alexei Pushkarev are the eighth of 27 sleds in the opening race weekend of the BMW IBSF sliding season. Two-man bobsleigh race underway here at Lake Placid. Martin Ager and John Morgan with the Russian women's crew there cheering their male counterparts off at the start. So fifth in this race last year. He was fifth in World Cup points. But he didn't do very well in Pyeongchang, only 16th place. And only 19th in the World Championships. Yeah, the Russians had a World Championships to forget. Right. It was a disaster for the women's team and their men's yeah. program. Last few weeks of the season for Kazanov, it's just, uh, just a nightmare. Rattle of the sled. Zukov is here. Has enough, finished 14 of fourth place in both the two and the four man up here at the Sochi Winter Olympic Games. And he lost by 200s and 300s. I think it was to Hulk in the two consecutive races. And he's looking to medal. Well, I didn't have a great two man season last year, just one medal, silver in Altenburg, but he had a really strong four man year. And he is in fourth place at the moment. With 19 more sleds there. Now, not all 19 are going to go quicker than I stand corrected. He won the last four-man race of the year in Pyeongchang. Rico Peter Matt. was way off the pace there in Pyeongchang. So I was wrong in that point. But uh, Kazanov, four-man, is his specialty here. You know, he's fourth place. Yep. Hundredth behind. The Korean War. Well, here we go. Jeremy Francisco Friedrich. This could be five seconds or so. Right he, here. He and Torsten Margus won this race three years ago. Nope. 505. Surprised at that. Friedrich didn't have very good training runs. He didn't take a second run yesterday. He's our World Cup champion. He's a triple two man world champion. And if he keeps up at this pace, he's going to challenge the legendary Eugenio Monti, who's got all the world championship total titles. 
but this kid keeps going for another Olympics. He could match it. And of course, in Koenigsegg in the world, he did something that Monty never did, which was shared gold with his teammates in the four-man gold. Yes, Monty shared the gold. Oh, did he? In the, in the Grenoble Olympic Games, he won gold on uh, first place, but horse fault. But the rule was the fast, fastest single. He won the gold medal. Yeah. They in changed the that rule. Boy, look at this. What's He's way team? off the pace here. Yeah, 22 hundreds back from Francesco Friedrich. Didn't race in Lake Placid last year. Listen, I saw the training time just today. He was way in the back of the bus. Something going on here with Friedrich or, or well, the kids got the strategy. We want to win at the end of the year. And if we don't want to win every race all year. Sometimes I've seen the Germans come out of the box with be patient and, you know, just build towards the Olympics. You can't win every time you come out. This guy seems like he could. No, nobody told Stephanie Schneider, who got the bronze medal. I just talked to her. She was so surprised with that this year. She just couldn't believe it, she said. But, you know, he was not very good in training. Again, didn't take a second run. This is... Well... There, was, there wasn't a final run in training yesterday either, so it all kind of puts you a little bit high in the eight ball. A second run, a lot of guys got second run. Yeah, a lot got, of people didn't take it. Yeah, got shut off early because of damage to the track. Next up is Austria's Benny Meyer with Marcus Sammer behind him. Benny Meyer looking forward to getting married in the summer to Elizabeth Varche. They've already got plans to go to Hawaii for the wedding. Elizabeth did pretty good this morning. She won a silver medal. It's Benny was flying in practice. Bronze medalist in Eagles in the two-man competition last year on his home ice. Good start. Yeah, 508. That's a great start with Marcus Sammer behind him. Let's see if he gets out of here with one tap and straight. Man, that was pretty quiet. Disaster for Austria's Christina Hengster in the women's race crashed just about here on the track. Yeah, but they did pretty good at winning scouting. Yeah, they did. Janine Flock blew the field away with a brand new track record in the first heat to win her second straight race here in the Classic. Three hundreds off the lead of Rick Peter. He's right in there swinging with the front runners at the moment. 1500s behind. Cody Baskey was 1600s behind at the end of the run. Needs to be clean down here in this finish straight. He's not going to finish in the top two, that's for sure. Is he going to have speed at the line? No. 56 40, 4200 away. I did they like that, I'm surprised. That's exactly the same time that we just saw from Francesco Friedrich. So they're tied for fifth out of only 10 slots. So we have another 22 slots, 42. So this is the, I'm correct my friend, I think this is like the 99th slide down of the day. I think the track, I don't know if the track's got a lot left in it. So anybody coming now is dealing with the deteriorating track conditions. Look at these lines. You can see the brakeman back there, though, so you don't see that. The aerodynamic pose, pose is so important on these tracks. Well, Benny's tied with our world champion, but they're back in joint fifth position after the first 10 sleds. It's Rika Peter of Switzerland, who leads from Cody Baskey of the USA and Yun Jung Won of Korea. Six different sleds in the top six, or six different countries in the top six positions. And we've got a chance of another one because Oscar's yeah. Kiba Manis of Latvia is next up with Manis Miknis gets a better start draw than his more senior teammate because he had a full season last year and Oscar's Belvadis didn't. 504. The second best start of the competition, or the, what is the best start of the competition? It is uh, 503 for Yun Jung Wan. Yeah, there you go. Okay, the there. Yeah. And this guy had a breakout season last year. Yeah. You know, we expected him to do that two seasons ago. I mean, they took him right off the streets of Latvia in 2013 and put him right in the front seat of a bobsled because he's a great decathlete. A lot of the Catholics in the field, we never talked about that. Didn't race here in North America last year, but his two-man season included bronze in Altenburg and Winterberg and silver in Yonkers. As good a line as we've seen all day from anybody, including the skeleton sleds. 700 lead. Let's see if he can get through here. The speed not 
as good as the previous ones. I don't think the track's got any speed left in the bottom. No. Okay, he's Look at that. One and a half mile an hour away. Everybody's losing a couple tenths in that last 150, 200 meters of the track. And, you know, it might not be like that when it gets a little colder. But well, Rico Pizzer only went six legs earlier, and he finished a quarter of a second faster. And the sled before Rico Peter, Yun Jung Won, did a 55.97. This is textbook. You want to know how to drive through uh, Curve 14 into the Chicane of Lake Placid? That's the line. Not everybody does that that well, I can tell you that. 18.19, this is a little danger zone down here. He makes it look very pedestrian. Well, he's in third place. And we are in the real strong part of the field still. <laughs> Justin Cripps with Jesse Lumsden. Justin Cripps, Jesse Lumsden, silver medalists on the track last year behind Steve Holcomb and Sam McGuffey. 5 0 9, that's a good getaway. First time Jesse's been competing as a father. Congratulations to him and Helen. Yeah, we're catching up with Helen Upton and probably Baby Flossie as well when they come to Whistler. Yeah. That's not a bad looking gene pool either for, for baby Flossy. <laughs> to an lead, speed, He's still holding on to that lead. Third on the splits, a little high maybe there, but he's got better speed than Rico Peter. Needs 82. Ooh, half a mile an hour slow. Well, what we've seen come down in the last four or five sleds, they lose two tenths down here, so he's going to be 2400 spot, 2000 behind, 1500 behind. Here. Tied for the lead with Rico. One corner to go. Going to be very close. Only 900 in it. That's what we want. Got a race on our hands. That's a good run. But, uh, no, he only lost. 10, 15 hundreds at the bottom, and we've seen the, the other sleds lose 20, 25 hundreds or more. Is that Lyndon Rush with a big ginger beard there? Yeah. yeah. The whole team's got beard. You should see Chris Spring coming up. Beard, he's got beard. Yeah. Canadians yeah. like their beards. Yeah, they do. And there's Jesse Lumsden. Merci beaucoup. Okay. Transition. Watch the back end of the sleds. Is Coming out, this is 18, 19. Little back end one. with the water in the air, but that was pretty smooth. Justin Cripps, silver medalist here last year. Best race of his two-man season. Okay. Ugis Alams and Intars Dambis. And this is the second of our Latvian sleds, and we still haven't got to the best Latvian duo. They're coming out a long way down the order in 18th spot. Let's see what Ugas Alims can produce here at the start. Again, should be 5 0 something. 5 15. That's about his norm. But he's medaled a couple times last year at St. Moritz. And, you know, we have two good Latvian drivers on tour. Then all of a sudden he shows up. We've got three good teams. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, the, the country's not that big of a country there. And, Huge population of Latvians are watching this broadcast. The most popular winter sport in the country. It's good for sport. Half a mile an hour down on Justin Cripps, who had the top speed all the way down the track, apart from at the start. 77.5. Cripps was at 82 miles an hour in the speed trap there. Wow, that is a big deficit. 79.6. Yeah. Wow. wow, half a second back, still in the top 10. Well, Head of Brad Hall, our second starter. First man out of the start shed, Kevin Baskew, still in third place. Well, the times are yo-yoing up and down all over the place, aren't they? A little perplexing to us. To you sit there using the sport pretty predictable and again you know slight lack of training and different conditions every single day must have made run a choice a bit of a suck it and see affair for a lot of these teams i think it's straight out the hundred slide just came down the track so yeah. i think that's there's what's that right there. there is that we've had a couple of crashes as well Johannes Lochner, the reigning joint four-man world champion with christian rusp behind him the first two-man sled race of their season. Well, let's see what these two start monsters can do. It should be mid-fives, high-fives. 
5.06, that's a good start from Hansi and Christian. Decent in training, unlike his teammate, the world champion, who was suspect in training, and he's back in you know, seventh place now. Germans didn't race here last year, they went back to Europe, didn't they? To have an extra week of training in Koenigsegg. Eh? Took two weeks in which to test the sleds. Yeah. Then they walked up and then skipped here and went back and did some more testing. The Germans have been known to do some testing. Yeah. Well, they might need to do a little bit more. From a good start, he's 1100 back, so he's lost two tenths of a second, Jorinho Peter, at half distance. Here goes to 35 40 hundreds at the bottom. They're just losing a lot of time here. Out to eighth place on the splits. Top ten only just. Another sled lost 30 hundreds at the bottom part of the track. Well, that was exactly the same as he's tied the last up. sled with Ugas Adams. Yeah, exactly to the hundredth of a second, and he started 9 hundreds quicker. I think the Germans have a little strategy that. Let's just go through the motions here. I can see this happening. Well, I'm not sure even if they're going through the motions, they may be testing something and coming up with the answer. Yeah. No, okay. We don't like that now. We don't want to win the World Cup. We want to win the Olympic Games. Um, the problem is your World Cup ranking also defines where you start in the Olympic draw, so you do need to be well up. Well, they might have determined that uh, it's more important to peak at the Olympics than the peak in De November and December. No, no, absolutely. I, I absolutely agree with that. And I'm sure they're testing equipment. And Johannes? Yeah. Sam Dostetler, the long-time German power on his right. I hate to not win. Alexei Stulnev of Russia with Ilya Malik behind him. Breakout year coming for this guy. Yeah. I think if this is his year, he's good in training all week. I hope I don't jinx him. These two spent a lot of time together last year. Ian Malik seems to be his number one choice when he's healthy as a breakman. 5 2 0. Good start. Breakout season. I was hoping he was going to, I was thinking he was going to get a start at 10 or 11 or 12 at 20. You know, that's the 12th best start. You can't challenge leaderboards for the 12th best start, especially on the two way tracks. I'm starting to sink down to the horizon. Someone on its back is not too bad. Well, at the moment, which is exactly where he started. A couple of minutes after four, I think sunset is about another 12 or 15 minutes away. Temperature is definitely dropping. The wind's picked up. Well, this is going to be a breakout heat right here. Ah. He's going to be 50 hundreds back by the time he gets across this finish line uphill. He will be ahead of Ivo De Bruyne. Yes, he moves up into ninth place, in fact, ahead of Toby, <laughs> uh, uh, Toby Luby and Brad Hall. And tied with Ugi Salims and Johannes Lochner. So we got a tie for seventh and a three-way tie for ninth. So 56-2-0 is the new black then, clearly, because that's what the last three sleds in a row have produced from three, yeah, from three different stars. Off a 5.15, a 5.06, and a 5.20, we've had three 56 two zeros. That's just random. There is no logic to that. Brad Hall's 200 spine. Here's a Rico Peter, the race leader from Justin Cripps and Cody Baskew. Let's go, Steve. Let's go. Okay. Let's see what the, this sled can do. Here is two winning gold medal Olympians. Justin Olsen and Stephen Langton were on Stephen Holcomb's crew. No, was, Langton wasn't with him in 2010. Langton wasn't with him in 2000. But he was with him in 2014 for the two brown sleds. But these are two very formidable athletes here. This could be low fox. Langton back in the team after three years away. 5-0-1. A hundredth away from the record. Had some real problems in yesterday's training coming down here. Right out of this curve coming up three to four. Out of cliff side into the white face curve. Langton won the two man worlds here in 2012, pushing Stephen Holcomb. Won the next two years in a row with Holcomb as well before he hung up his spikes. 20 hundreds down to 17. Now he's just got to hold on because the track doesn't have a lot left in it down here, but that was a pretty smooth 11, 12, 13 combination. Two years ago, Olsen was learning to drive. Now he's trying to win races. 800s in front of Rico Peter. 
question is how much. He got a three, so he's probably going to be down red numbers three or four, but this is a great run for Olsen. Top three finish here. Yeah, second place, only nine hundreds behind. We'll take that coming as late as he did in the field, and he's thirteen hundreds advantage. Tied with Cripps for second. Three sleds covered by nine hundreds of a second. Oh, there's going to be somebody else in the mix forward down here. Yeah. Cody Bascu, 1600s back. You got Spring and Polonato coming up too. Yeah. And Mel Bartis, Nico Walter. There's a few caster characters left here that yeah. could challenge for the top three spots. And Olsen, with this start time and the team he's got, athletes, U.S. team is so deep from the first sled to the third sled. They have, tomorrow they can roll in a different break. Snow's arrived. The shades are down, and it won't affect the race, but the weather is definitely on the change. Nico Walter for Germany with Christian Poser behind him. Christian's wife, Jamie Grubel Poser, won the women's race the last two years, took a medal here again today. Christian says he's very healthy this year. He won the uh, German push-off for the, the lightweight crew. Kevin Kuska won the push-off for the heavyweight crew. I don't also, think was good being a lightweight at any ever. day of his life. Well, Christian's healthy. Yeah. And, and I talked to him the other day. He's really healthy. Struggled the last couple of years. The question is, can he maintain his health coming into the season? Nico Volta was training really well as well. He's still in the lead. It was 200 at the start. It's 400 of a second now. And Will he be the man to depose Rico Peter? And he had a disastrous two-man season last year. He was just saying, I'm using two-man warm-up for the form. And he was all smiles yesterday when we were chatting in training. Three hundreds, the gap's coming down. Rico Peter no, has... pulled away! Wow! The leader. Rico Peter always has sensational speed at the highest speeds. But he has the lead by a hundred! Four sleds covered by a tenth. So this German... Maybe they have different strategies for different German sons, but Nico's going to like this. He doesn't really care for the two men. He's more of a four-man guy. Hey, listen, if he starts winning, he'll care for it a bit more. Maybe they say, Nico, you can go out and try and win the race. The other guys just relax. I mean, look at his, his yeah. race, 11th in World Cup last year. His best finish was a sixth place in Altenburg. Every other finish was double digit to a man. Well, wait till he gets the helmet off. Great run from Nico Volta. Look at these lines. Through 11, 12, and 13. Ben fires down out of Benham's Ben into this chicane. Spectacular pictures. Nice lines. Now Snow's arrived, and they've all got the new racer's haircut, real short buzz cuts for all the Germans. Now then, here's the man that owns the start record, or the men that own the start record, 5-0-0, Oscars Melbardis and Damas Treskins, and that was set back in 2012 in the World Championships, John. No, it wasn't, November, the year after the Worlds. Well, these are the, this is a veteran team. And in that race, they set the start record. They didn't even feature in the medals. Hulk had won from Corey Butner and Francesco Friedrich. Yeah, he's coming off back injury only half the tour last year. Spoke to him yesterday. He said, how are you doing? And, and how is Darmus doing? He said, yeah, we're pretty healthy. The temperature is dropping a little bit. But we're seeing some, some snow come down. I thought the ice was getting soft, which is why we yeah. saw the boss of time in the bottom part of the track. I'm not sure it's going to turn around immediately, but for the second heat, it might get quicker and quicker and quicker. The next six, seven sleds might see a temperature drop two or three degrees. Yeah. But here, he's quarter second back, and that's going to grow to 35 or so at the bottom. Better speed at the bottom, 83.1 miles an hour. That's really quick. Well, that comes in his ninth guys. place ahead of the tie for 10th, Benny Meyer and Francesco Friedrich. Now we got to look at start who's going to get bumped. Dammit's having to push the sled all the way up. He was a bit eager on the brakes earlier on. If there's anybody you want to push the sled up with, it'd be him. Look at the size of him. Yeah. You know, 250 pounds, he runs like a deer. Yeah, they are gazelles, aren't they, these two? And look at the gorgeous chrome livery on the sled. It's absolutely fabulous. Well, that's the sport. This, this is their sport, their national sport in the winter. They got a few hockey players, too. But speed difference, yeah. a kilometer and a half, about a mile an hour. 
dealing with hundreds of seconds. He had the top speed in every trap down the run. Here we go yeah. next with Chris Spring and Alex Kopax. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Spring's gone back to the I'm not cutting my hair deal until we win a medal. So just about every one of his possessions in the summer and bought himself a small camper where he now lives. He wants to dedicate himself 100% to try to win an Olympic medal. Good training all week. Yeah. He's coming in this season with his tail up in a way that I don't think I've ever seen. Hundred of a second in the lead, still from Nico Volta. Red numbers though. Didn't have the speed wall to give him the exit of Shady, the entrance to Shady. Now he's just fighting not to lose more time. Nine hundreds behind, he's still in the mix. If he can get in the top four or five, then anything is possible. 1900s back. This is around Cody Vasquez and Oscar's Kiba Manis. 31, ninth place. Another slag that just, just lost a lot of time on the bottom part of that track. Fourth best start time, ninth best downtime. 300s quicker than Melbarnis at the top, 700s quicker than Melbarnis at the bottom. Now Chris Spring for Canada. We're Justin Cripps, his teammate, in third. He slots into ninth place. Another Canadian sled coming up now. And another man who had a great end to the year. This didn't help. This is out of curve two. Tap, slow speed in the three. And he has to steer too much in three. There's a couple taps and a skid. That didn't help his cause for sure. And then down here in the bottom part of the track, there's some little on the wrong side of the curve going in there in the labyrinth. Oh, yeah. Well, there's the Springer. Here's Nick Polignato with Nick, uh, with Neville right back behind him. Polignato ended the two-man season on a high. He was 14th in Whistler, 13th here at the beginning of the year. Then he went fifth in the World Championships, fourth in Pyeongchang. Oh, a crash training. Then came out and had the fifth best time in the next run. Pretty fearless, including the World Championships last year. Top five. Surprised everybody. Coming out party for the Bishops University football player was very late in the 11 and 12. Only 600s back, but the speed not very good. See if you can not lose three tenths in the bottom like most of the other sleds. Still only a few hundreds behind. Now that's out to two tenths of a second. Yeah, the speed and the exit is shady. And then the issue we had into six, seven. Yeah, like Springer, it's all going away further down the track, and this will see him out of the top 12. Wow, 13. Yeah. You know, for that start time, eighth best start, and then Neville. Well, normally, if you're 400s behind the multiple two-man world champion, Francesco Friedrich, you're right in the mix for the gold medal. Right now, he's in 13th with Friedrich in a two-way time, 11. Friedrich died for... Three right tied for 11. Yeah. And Polo. There's two, there's two tied for 11. There's three tied for 14. Yeah, Polonato is 200s ahead of that three way tie behind him. So how close is that? Four sleds, 200s. You think that's the proper line? Go. <laughs> oh, he crashed there last year twice in this competition. Yeah. In the format. Never right's ahead. Never right's head there was about a foot lower than his backside. He crashed last year, made it to the finish line came back in the second run crashed again he's a warrior Nico Valter leads 20 sleds down here in Lake Placid seven still to go for the remaining sleds it's go fast or go home bump somebody to try and get into the race first to try and do it is Dong Yun Kim of Korea he's got Jin Soo Kim behind him well, headshot looked like Lin Wo Sio I have to say yeah, yeah, yeah who has already gone down <laughs> with injured one there in seventh place. So what can Kim do? Kim started his career, they split them. One would drive the two-man races, Kim would drive the four-man races. Of course, that doesn't work in the long term, so now both doing both. But he was definitely a better four-man pilot than a two-man driver. And the Koreans had two slants in the top five last year in the World Cup here in Lake Placid in the first run. Kim fell off second run. 17th at the start, down to 19th on the splits at the moment he's in the race, but will he stay in? Two Italian slides at 19th and 20th. Off Gardner, 
Now this is all, this is my worry for the Korean program. Last year he was sixth in Whistler, effectively their home track, because that's where they learned and grew up. He was seventh here, and today, 12 months on, he's only just made the cut. Pierre Luders did not look overly in, uh, like he enjoyed that. We still got some people coming down the track. Pat Tasker, Cunningham, Andriana, Hefty, Luke Costage. There's, still there's half a dozen who might bump him. Yeah, there's still people coming down the track. Yeah, he bumps Patrick Baumgartner, who he thought would be a casualty after that start. Okay, yeah, we're done. Um, Kim's looking at that going, yeah, whatever. That was not a run he needed. Seventh last year, 20th this year. Bruce Tasker, former two-man brake man, and four-man brake man, with Joel Fear on behind him. The second of our British drivers. Joel's about the fourth fastest guy. Yeah, third fastest, 100 meters of all time by a British sprinter two summers ago. Just too late to make it into the Rio Olympic squad. And Tasker, well, he's really probably one of the best athletes in the front seat. Him, Olsen, Valbardis, Friedrich. Oh, 504, there you go. That's what he needs to try and make this field. That's the first step. Get into the race. Wait there, let's see if he gets out of three. One tap, straight. Didn't race here last year either, but didn't fail to make the cut in any of the two man races and was ninth in the World Championships. Really hope he stays oh! Did he get that back? Oh. Well, he went from 400s up to 900s back, but that is going to cost him half a second, three quarters of a second by the bottom of the run. Cost him a few years off his life. There. Cost me a few years off my life. Never mind him. Wow, he's still hanging in there. In the top 20, but can he stay in? 21st? No, he's done. I'm afraid. Wow. Well, how that stayed up, I will never know. I'll but tell you, next week in Park City, this guy's in the top seven or eight. Watch. A lot easier track, different personality. Well, he's got to go again tomorrow. He could make the top 20 uh, easily oh, yeah. again right. tomorrow. I forget, there's a two-man race. Double two-man race. <laughs> four man goes two -man. The track next week's two four man. Double four-man next week. <laughs> tough to change the... Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's uh, yeah, the habit of a lifetime. Yes, <laughs> exactly right. Well... Crikey, if he has more than one get out of jail free card, then he certainly played one of them here. Look at this. How about these pictures? What does that tell you? Look at those pictures. Airport. What did Joel Fearon feel? But Joel like Fearon knew they were going over, not once, but twice. Look at Lee Johnson, the coach. Lee, oh, how did he get away with that? Rudy Rinaldi of Monaco and Boris Vat. Rudy Rinaldi struggling a little bit for fitness at the start of this season. He was telling me yesterday. And 5.24, that shows, doesn't it? Yeah, this is a top 10 in the World Championship last year. Cordic see the, yeah. you know, the radical program on the way up. You know, if you can't run, you can't train, you can't push. Yeah, 14th here last year. And as you said, 10th place in the world. That's why they aren't doing four man, because he, he doesn't have any fitness to do both. He's got to come out here and do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Which is going to be paradoxically even harder, because he's pushing half the weight as opposed to a quarter of it. Yeah, so he'll be very grateful of a day or two's rest. 3,900's back. He's in the race. He was 21st at the start, up to 19th. He's and not doing four man. It'll be interesting to see what he does next week down in uh, to go to Park City or not. Yeah, that's a good call. If he's unhealthy, he might not. 18th, he's in, and Kim of Korea, as I think Kim expected, is not. There's still, there's two more guys coming. Yeah. Including a one Costage from France, Hefty, Adriano, Cunningham. These are all names we're very familiar with on the World Cup. Yeah, tour. definitely. So I, I kind of think he's he's going to get bumped. Well, he's tied look, 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 with look, Evo De Bruyne as well, so they're him, either both him. in or both out. Look at him grab his foot. Yeah. He might not race tomorrow. He might not race in a second. Oh, might be a he, well, yes, there's that too. He was sitting in the sled all week long. Yeah. Training. And even if he has to sit in, he won't drop out of the top 20, so he will go in the second heat, yeah. even if he has to sit in. Yeah. Think of the number of times that Simone Batazzo has had to sit. Holcomb as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, next up is a man who 
should be in the top 20 unless there's something really screwy going on. Mick Cunningham, Ryan Bailey behind him, another of the young recruits to this US squad. Olympic silver medalist is from London. Sprint. You know, when you when you get athletes of the calibre that they have had joining the programme last three or four years, and somebody's hard to Wow, Nick Cunningham has never been off the top of the track with that type of speed. But that's, you know, you got a world-class athlete in the back, just learned, hurt his back last year. You know, and you have to adapt your sprint track and field body to bobsled. And it's a totally, you know, when I was talking to him, that, it takes a while to adapt your train, and obviously he's done it in one short year. This is a big highlight for the United States to get Nick cutting at that type of start. He's still got green numbers. 1800s up. Wow. Shoots this okay. Oh. Now he raises it up to him. He still should be top three. Might lose the time back down here in the bottom. Down to one, yeah, it's going to be red numbers, maybe a ninth or tenth, hundredth spot. He's still a hundredth in front of Nico Balta. He's right in the medal hunt, nine hundredths back. So there's five sleds within ten hundredths of the lead. Yeah. Three sleds, two sleds, ten hundredths back, one sled, nine hundredths back. A Peter's one hundredth pack of Walter. One. Oh, yeah. Oh, Listen. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> You know what, what got them that oh boy? The 01. Richard told them 01 starts. Listen, Nick Cunningham. So Nick, you're a great athlete from Boise State. But that guy in the back from Olympic silver medalist from London. Ryan, welcome to Bobsledding. Well, you know, you get the caliber of Lolo Jones joining, all the other track and field athletes, suddenly it's on the radar. Look at these lines too. Yeah. And he's coming late, so yeah. he's gonna have a little better time, track time to work with. Boy, we got some second heat coming off the way, though. Oh, boy. It's hot, man. It's the coach. Since we're back in Hilly from the middle. Andriano, there's somebody else. Yeah. Maxim Andrianov could make it into the field. We've already lost Patrick Baumgartner and Simone Batazzo of Italy, King of Korea, Tasker of Great Britain. On the bubble now, Rudy Rinaldi and Ivo de Brun. They are tied for 19th. They'll both be in or both be out. 1500s behind. He's 19th on the splits off the 18th fastest start. We are flirting with the drop zone here. 2300s back, still in 19th. There could be one other option. Rinaldi and De Bruyne might tie with Andrianov. Wouldn't surprise me. No, today, Bruyne. Five teams tied now. 3,400s back. 1,800s up. Now he's in with Toby, uh, with uh, Brad Hall and Toby Alubi. 14th. Oh, no, no, no. He slipped out to 20th on the splits. No. On the bottom. And he's out. He is out. De Bruyne is still in there. Yeah, De Bruyne and Rinaldi are tied for 19th, and he is out. We got, we got a world champion coming down. The Olympic silver medal is coming up next. Hefty. Yeah. And then we got the French. Hefty, I'm saying it now. I'm betting. It's an Olympic cycle too far. Nah, I got to believe one of these two sleds is going to bump these guys. Well. These lines are decent. Mm -hmm. Surprised he's this far back. Not a bad run through the chicane. <clears throat> he didn't have Number much one. of a start though. 18th fastest start. 21st downtown. Yeah, don't need to lose much, do you? Nico Valter leads the tightest race at the top, but the pressure is on now to make the field. Two sleds to go, 25 down, two to go. This is Bert Hefty with Marco Tanner, another new break. And Bert Hefty's last good run here was into silver five years ago with Alex Bauman behind him. Since Bauman left, John, Hefty has had no start. Well, I don't think Hefty's the start anymore. He used to be. He used to be the dominant player in the field from 2006 to... 14. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I think uh, his career is, you know, I mean, he's in the twilight of his career here. And, but he can still make the top 20 here easy. 23rd fastest oh, start. Oh, that was late there. Maybe not. What's he no, He's not going to make a deal from here. No, he's not. Teammate Rico Pita is second, a hundredth off the lead. And Hefty is not going to make the field. 
And with double four-man races in Park City next week, he may not go to Utah. I just go right to Western. Francisco right to Europe. 23rd. Wow, so Evo De Bruyne. Now what correct me if I'm wrong here, but if Floyd Costage comes down here and finishes in 18th, we'll have a tie for 19th while 21 slugs in the field. We will. So those guys have automatically yeah. qualified. They are in. Good for Evo De Bruyne. Yeah. Good for Rudy Ronaldo. With right that broken foot. Guys. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Right out for them. Absolutely. Guys. And Hefty does not make the cut. He has another chance tomorrow, but he's got to tidy this sort of thing up. Oh, that was almost look Bruce Tasker. Nosed dived yeah. in. Pressure. Not as bad as Bruce Tasker's, but not far off. I don't think Dan Hefty ever thought he'd be in this position. Sometimes you know have, you have to quit when you know when to quit. Final sled in our first heat. Lloyd Costeg of France with Vincent Castel behind him. He doesn't have a great start, but he's a good pilot. Yeah, 21st best start. You know, I, I love the fact that Ivo De Bruyne, who we're rooting for to qualify according to the Dutch standards, and Rudy Rinaldi from Monaco with his injuries, they're, they're going to make the field in the second round. Well, Costa was 16th here last year. He's got the pace. He can do it. He didn't make the field in Whistler, the season opener. We know he's a good driver. Look at these lines. 21st place. This is close. We're all now easing away to 23rd now. He needs a bit of a miracle on ice himself down at the bottom of the track. Lines. You know, he's good 25th, but, he's that's out. As good as anybody coming through, but what's the track got left? Well, of course, I say it's getting colder, but... I'm not sure he has enough getting... left. I know, not sure he's got anything left in the sled, though. 25th, and Fifth. that's where he is at the line. Means we have 19, the 219, so Adriano yep. misses by five hundreds. Yep. Bertazzo, look at the Bertazzo, Hefty, well, medalists on this track. Hefty, silver here five years ago, Bertazzo, a race winner here eight years ago. Bruce Tasker. Yeah, well, Bruce Tasker. I've got a lot of money. He competes tomorrow. I bet he's in the top 12. Yeah. This line, well, this is... How do you get through the chicane? Check that out right there. But, you know, sometimes... You get Again, control of the yeah. slide. Maybe you're steering too much. Runner choice and all of that will play into it as well, don't they? So, like Costa, Vincent Castel do not make the field that is headed by Nico Walter and Christian Poser of Germany. They got a huge lead of a hundredth of a second. So the Grubel Poser family already have a medal courtesy of wife Jamie in the first heat. Christian might get a medal in this in the uh, men's competition. Jamie get fourth this morning. Uh, oh, she was off the podium. Yes, yeah, she was bumped in the final run. You're absolutely right. So it's down to Christian then to redress the balance. Look for the at this Grubel lineup. Poser Look at family. this race. Wow. This is awesome. A tenth of a second covering the top five sleds. Baskew not out of the medals either. Look, he's only, what, eight hundreds away, ten hundreds away from a medal. So it could go... Lake Placid. Yeah, and Oscars Kiba Manis might have a shout as well. Oscars Malvardis, a little bit further back. Surprised at that. And Francesco Frigid, what's going on with that program there? And Johannes Lochner, you know, their teammate is leading the race. 19th place, equal Rudy Rinaldi and Ivo De Bruyne both go from Maxim Andrianov of Russia down. Those will join the fans watching trackside for the second and deciding heat in World Cup number one of the two-man bobsleigh season. Look at the track. Yeah. Look at the track. Well, well a it's an exciting first heat. Do you know what? If you thought the first heat was exciting, you better join us for the second heat because we are going to have a barnstorming finish. The sleds will start on ice at 1700 Eastern. That's 2200 Greenwich Mean Time. Join John Morgan, the IBSF TV crew, and me, Martin Haven, in just over half an hour for the deciding heat in the first race of the two man season.